Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Our latest Choir 1 build we did seemed to have gone really well for everyone. Nice. So let's keep that ball rolling with another easy to use and fantastic wall of build that makes Choir 1 even more busted than before. Before we start, what build would you like to see me do next with Choir 1? Be sure to comment below. Starting with a general aim and as I got the build, our aim is to provide another seemingly straightforward and powerful build that everyone can opt into and use when using Choir of One. Our secondary aim is to make sure the build focuses its main firepower into our ability and void weapons alone. For this, we will be using Nezrak Sin and Choir of One. A star with Azotic, Nezrak Sin, with its Azotic effect, Abyssal Extractor, it states Avoid damage kills, increase ability energy recharge rate. Nezrak's ability offers players the flexibility of getting ability energy back just from using void weapons of any type. Though a void subclass would offer a greater gain, a strong and flexible void weapon is enough to make a large impact with how much energy you get back over time. Since I'm using Vortex Grenade, Choir 1 and Hammerhead for the void side of things, I can quite easily get the 200% to 300% ability energy back for whatever ability is out of use which is handy for Vortex Grenade's high cooldown and my Arcane Needle cooldown time as well. Our second exotic is the Choir of One with its exotic effect Command Frame, which states, A fire is extended range, heavy caliber projectiles at a reduced rate of fire. It deals increased precision damage when aiming down sights. Combining a high impact scout, rocket propelled sidearm and Cerberus plus one is what you would get when using this weapon and by god does it hit like a truck. You can pretty much take this anywhere you like, as the secondary effect works out pretty well for dealing with majors, mini bosses, and bosses alike, even without buffs applied. With how strong its damage ready is, combining this with Nezerax will make it very easy to build up constant ability energy without the usage of our fragments in play. In many ways, the build is pretty flexible without the added need of fragments and aspects, which allows greater freedom for customizing to your scenarios. So for Aspen's Fragments, we then have the following. A Feed of Void where defeating targets with any ability kill will activate Devour. Helion where casting your Rift will produce a Solar Mortar that lobs flame and projectiles at targets which scorches them. A Facet of Hope where while you have an elemental buff, your class ability slowly recharges. A Facet of Dominance where your Void Grenade weaken targets. While your Art Grenades jolts them. A Facet of Bravery where getting a grenade kill will grant you Void Weapons Volatile Rounds. Defeating targets with midi, final blows will grant you unraveling rounds for your strand weapons. A facet of balance, while rapidly defeating light targets grants midi energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And facet of dawn, where powered midi hits grants you radiant. Powered midi final blows will grant radiant for you and allies. So as mentioned before, since the build has Nesrax Sin available for all ability cooldown, you have room to explore and add different types of fragments you may not have used commonly before. For me, for example, I've added Facet of Bravery to the mix, as this will allow my already OP AR to become even more powerful with thanks to the volatile effect applied. Although Choir 1 can get destabilized on lands as part of this catalyst unlocked, you may want to have a different catalyst applied while making full use of the fragment as well. From here, I also added the Facet of Dawn as the constant ability regen allows my melee to be used more often than normal. Arcane Needles are perfect for this as her range and damage behaviour allows us to cover all sorts of encounters fairly well. On top of that, the free Radiant buff means our weapons can get a fast boost of damage whenever we like, which is always welcoming for such a build. Everything else added will enhance our damage and ability regen over time, and even with what we got, we still have room to improve down the line if we generally wish. For the mods and stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline mods as our top priority. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenades. A vortex are great for ad clearing and applying consistent damages to bosses when you add on faster dominance into the mix. This extra level of debuff applied to anyone around us will allow our AR to do even more damage within a given duration of the effect, but at the same time, using storm grenades are also a good choice to pick if you want to apply jolt to enemies instead. So since grenades are easy to build into, I would suggest having the following mods will help support the rest of the kit as follows. 
Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% melee buff. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Bolstering detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. The times 2 for the given mod are also recommended if you prefer one ability over another. Additional mods, we have the following. Avoid Siphon for creating all the power via Void Weapons. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. The stacks and stacks for additional stack of armor charge. A powerful attraction for automatically collecting orbs of power when using our class ability. And special the Heavy Finder, Reserves, and Scavenger Ammo mods are highly recommended for the Void Weapons we are currently using. We also have the special ammo finisher mod which is also handy to have on hand. If you intend to use your secondary effect a lot, I would recommend you have the mod on hand as well. Now, as we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. A primary, we have the different times pulse rifle, with heating up and hatchling. And since we are using faster bravery and dawn quite often in the build, I thought it would be best to expand these areas further by adding accompanying weapons to the mix. Uh, the following is a rapid fire frame weapon, which is a hard to control at times, but feels good to use when breaking barriers or quickly dealing with the minor enemies. Uh, the perks for the weapon should help with making this experience smoother for most players to use, and if you don't have the following a lot, then the Synchronic Roulette SMG from New Amona is a great alternative to keep the playstyle alive. Heavy, we have the Hammerhead Machine Gun with killing tally and destabilizing rounds. Easy to get weapon, that's quite honestly amazing to have on hand for void based builds. It pretty much can compete with most machine guns in game, and using this against mini bosses and bosses will always reward you with the raw damage output they can pull off within this base magazine. So while our last build focused purely on damage and keeping the damage going on for longer, and super as well, this one is more rounded up for survivability while still dishing out some good damage. We've mentioned how quiet one's main weakness is that you can burn through his ammo quite quickly when using simply just the heavy attack. But at the same time, it's also quite worth the investment considering that the amount of damage being pulled through is quite a lot. This time round, we've made sure to be consistent with which attack form we use, so we can harbor our ammo more often. We've also added on additional mods and fragments to help bolster damage, which in many ways would allow us to use less ammo in the process as well. In this gameplay footage shown, you'll see the build in action in all its glory, taking out enemy after enemy with ease. From the devastating explosions of your grenades, to the raw power of both your special and heavy, absolutely nuking everything around you. Every moment is a testament to the build's incredible potential. But this isn't just about taking enemies down. It's also about showcasing how absurdly powerful this gun can be with any build in mind. The Warlock Choir 1 build is all about making a statement, and this gameplay footage shows exactly what it's capable of. In the heat of battle, every second counts, and with this build, you'll be able to stay one step ahead of the competition. At its core, it's a build that's all about maximizing what you already have and then just doubling down on it. If you want to make this build even more OP as shown, just improve what the weapon already does well. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.